we have no time to waste, Mark Z. We are jumping straight into picks and bans for our fourth game of this best of five. BDS bounce back, but they got to do more than that if they want to try and take this series. Yeah, it's going to be a long, hard-fought victory. They have not made it easy. Losing on day one to Team Wales, forcing them to make the run through the loser's bracket. They did 2-0 those next two series, but here, making themselves have to commit to a reverse sweep to make it. But I got to say, the EU fans are with them. Oh we, yeah! Of all the people, there are a lot of EU casters on my timeline who are extremely excited, and somehow I am here. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you get to have a front seat, yeah. dead center of all the I action. I see Medic freaking out, Draco's freaking yep. out, Goldberg throwing his hands all over the place. Yeah, I mean that's why we got to be the independent adjudicators. Yes. You know, we got to be very fast. surely because this is the thing. We were having a little chat when you know, obviously during the break, and we we're kind of talking about like kind of where did it go wrong for PSG. And they kind of just stopped doing things. It was kind of like 15, 16 minutes, doing grand, 2,000 gold up. The uh, the NAR was so far ahead. And then everything just stopped. And they didn't really look for any kind of proactive plays. No, and then the, a lot of the plays that they did look for were quite uh, mechanically misplayed. So I think there's a lot of things for PSG to improve. For BDS, you sort of found a foothold back into the series, potentially, where you were able to get the Maokai. That looked great for you. Now, Crownies, uh Kylis, uh, Kaisa, excuse me, maybe some people had some things that wanted to see improved on it, but at least he played it and was able to take it away from Waka, which I think is a big part of that because then he's on Caitlyn suddenly. It's not nearly the same thing. And even sometimes a denial pick, regardless of if you're SSS plus tier edit, at least they are not getting that. So I thought all those kinds of things were really big. And here, we'll have, see how PSG wants to react now that they are on blue side. You can see them banning a couple of Crownies champions, but if you don't first pick the Kaisa here, I would expect them to just take I it themselves. I was going to say, like, you're going to go ahead and get the Maokai for yourself. Yes, the Maokai was very powerful. Shale looked fantastic on it comparatively to things like the Talia in the series. But surely you just go Kaisa Sejuani here. Yeah, you can play either Or side. even Rakan. Sure. I mean, you can go whatever you want. I think you, the Kaisa is the one thing I, I would not want to negotiate on because you do not yes. want to see that in Waco's hands again. But I would say, yeah, just grab the other side of the Sejuani or grab the Rakan because you do not need to match jungle immediately. And then you can save both soul lands for phase two. And back yourself here, Crowny. You did... The job you needed to do in that last game, and you get yourself the Kaisa. Like we said, they may look for a jungler. They may look to try and just get the a support locked in and loaded. We'll see what way they want to try and work with it for the moment. But, I mean, great confidence boost there for the side of BDS to be able to try and push themselves and say, look, we can take the trade of the Maokai and the Kaisa. And the Ivern gets through. It was being banned out in phase two, usually, I yes. believe. So here he is, able to grab it. And you can see, when you talk about the uh, attitude of the BDS players, have more smiles on their face. You saw Sheo uh, kind of cycling through a lot of 80 champions. They're feeling good about themselves after that long, hard-fought game and knowing, like, hey, we're still in the series. You know, the, the dream is not dead just quite yet. Well, PSG, going to go back to an old favorite, you would imagine, with the Jace combination with the Maokai. So, so powerful at just con controlling areas. The poke that comes out from these two champions, just absurd. But now, you're kind of in a situation. Do you take your AD carry here, or do you try and deny that Rakan away? There's a couple of different options now available where the draft gets a little bit muddied. Yeah, we'll have to see what they want to go, because BDS is also very happy to play kite back compositions when they have this Ivern as well. Kaisa, not really a kite back champion, despite having that poke available. At some point, you're going to want to go flying in there. As we see the Aphelios come through, Waco is an incredible Aphelios. He absolutely smurfed on kids with this in MSI, but not the highest priority champion in the current meta. No, has taken a fair amount of wax with the L ba uh, nerf hammer mm -hmm. over the last few patches uh, as we tried to get, shake him out of the meta. But I mean, just having access to so many different varieties of engage and disengage and damage and all these different things, he is still an exceptional pick regardless of when and where you take him. But BDS not wasting any more time. They're not going to go with the Rakan themselves. They're going to take away the Nautilus and start banning away things that can deal with this Kaisa poke like we mentioned before. Really like the Nautilus pick up here. I know Nautilus Death Fund is always something on high alert for people, but it does work very well with the Kai'Sa, both in terms of wave clear, which is being able to cast your abilities on the wave and shove it quite quickly. You have a lot of setup, a lot of ways to apply plasma stacks. Uh, very, very strong champion combo with her, so like to see Lebrov on this one, who, again, is having a pretty good series. There were some, some things in that Alistair game which were a little scary, but mechanically he has been on point for the most part. Yeah, the, hex, the, the hex gate switcheroo and then just going to go, and you know what? I could go for a little more. Maybe I can clear a ward <laughs> maybe, maybe I could take the 1v1 against the Nar, and it's like, please don't. Please, yeah. please don't do this. Did end, up, did end up living there, but yeah, definitely some moments where I think people are getting pretty hyphy and needing to take a moment, get a breather, and here we are. Vans, the Nar got rid of after seeing the Olaf taken out. 
And the Azir. So two things that were very prominent in the win for BDS in that last game, no longer available. So if they want to try and take this draft, I feel like you can maybe go for your mid lane, give Adam that counter pick again. You should be able to get him a fairly decent uh, matchup, regardless of what the side of uh, Aja takes. Yeah, and we'll see. Crowny, I was going to ask where he was going to go. He is a control mage player going to one of his staples in the Casio. No surprise to see that exactly, though it is not what you typically see in the meta. It's a Jace for most people. It is kind of his champion. It does feel like it is very much a, a nuke thing to put in there. And I will say, like, you know, kind of putting down the Miasma, stopping things like the Maokai and the Jason just running at you and kind of slowing them down can lead to decent things. But it does take a while to, 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 to ramp up. So the Jax gets in for here for Aja. Now, where do you want to try and take this last pick? And then, honestly, I still think the Rakan is semi-decent, but has a lot of things that can deal with it, unfortunately, on this side of BDS. Yeah, I would also not mind just committing to even more healing, potentially, because you outrange the Cassio and Kaisa right now. And so if you can, you know, rock forward with green gun or throw your turret down these sorts of things while also shock blasting and, and minions or a sapling excuse me it becomes a little annoying for bds's comp to play they'll have to land some engagement going for a bit of a 4-1 here with wako once again throwing down the gauntlet saying what else you have other than renekton the garen is up and he has played it into jacks a few times i know people debate how good it is in the 1v1 but with Ignite, you tend to win them, it seems like. And so it would be no surprise if Adam goes for the G. We got the G, the O, and the S. If we go to a game five, I need to get the Darius on that particular pick. But the Garen does get locked and loaded here for the side of BDS. They're very comfortable with kind of getting Adam on these particular picks. And again, it does feel like, as you say, depending on who you talk to, it's a counter, it's not, it's all these different things. When Adam plays it, you have to start feeling like with having an Ivern on his back, he's going to be able to make things happen. Yeah, absolutely. I think this is what we wanted after watching that one Scion game, which is the S currently in Gods. It was not the one you wanted, though. And it left a lot to be desired where he just couldn't have an impact on the map. Here, there's no way that there is not stuff happening between Sci uh, Jax and Garen, excuse me. And for the rest of BDS, again, it's going into their comfort for the most part. The biggest splash here is arguably crowny on the Kaisa. But again, it's a takeaway from Wako forcing further down his own priority list. Yeah, absolutely. And look. For BDS, this could be the turning point. Kaisa has been let through by the side of PSG. They did not first pick it. Was that the key pick coming into this series? Was that the piece of information that PSG maybe underestimated, maybe overestimated on their way to answer it? So for them, PSG are still have a job to do. They still know what they need to do in order to come out with a victory here. It's just win. It's that simple. It's a Just win. Just win. It's that easy. But they've done it twice. Can they do it a third time for BDS? And they take an all-important second step to getting themselves back towards the reverse sweep. Took them a while in game number three. See how much cleaner or not it will be in game number four. We'll see what they can cook up for us here. Also, with the Nautilus, level ones are interesting. You also have Ivern interesting level ones. We'll see if they have something because that is what BDS is sort of known for. And they are no strangers to making games a little crazy. Crazy is our game. It's LPL, not LECs. Well, the level ones were predicted, if you will, but not spotted out for the moment. Everyone just grouped together. Nobody going to find anything of any any worth. Uh, they are spotted out, and BDS does spot the fact that they were spotted out, and now PSG going for the long wraparound. Are you stronger level one in a 5v5 face check? I'm not sure. So. I don't think so with an Ivern, unfortunately, and an Ignite on the uh, the Garen as well. So Garen spinning on five people feels pretty good, I will say. If you get a five-man knock-up with Woody and Maple has extra buttons because he's Jace level one. Yeah. But nothing will happen, unfortunately. Nothing, nothing will happen, but the vision was cleared, so PSG... Happy with the information they were able to garner. BDS now recognizing that everything's just kind of calmed down again. So, coming back into this matchup, coming back into kind of the top lane, if you will, I want to see Adam really put pressure onto Aja. Aja has an exceptional series. In that last game, it just felt like he kind of lost his way a little bit on the NAR, but he was still doing exceptional work in this, and Adam has been put in his place. Yeah, it's been a bit of a 1v9 for Aja. <laughs> this series has been absolutely popping off. And while Adam did have a much better game in the previous one, in the mid to late game portion, having really incredible team fights on Olaf, which can be difficult to do, the laning phases have largely gone Aja's way, and we'll see if this Garen pick can finally win him one early on, because that might throw a whole new dynamic into this series. 
We won't get hyped up for a Nautilus level 1 hook just yet. Hey, bro, he took 200 HP off him. That's it. And his passive's going to come up in about three minions. He's going <laughs> to heal himself back yeah, up. Yeah, he'll be fine. So, I mean, look, it's it's kind of how we see it. But it does give priority over the side of BDS. It is the way of uh, the Aphelios matchup. Aphelios isn't really a champion at level 1, to be perfectly honest. He just can switch between the guns. Then he gets an ability afterwards. As we got the spin to win. It's a bit of a Beyblade up on the top side. A Beyblade battle. Yeah, one's a helicopter. One's a, a blender. Yeah. I guess what of the Beyblender? What, what, you, I like Beyblade, but... Yeah, Bay Bay Blenders. <laughs> Did you ever play it? I used to play it. you ever it. grip it and rip it? Yeah. <laughs> it was a fun game at the time, but I don't think I've played it in a very, very long time, as we can see now. Uh, yeah, I, was, I was all over Beyblade back in the day, but here... Have you watched the animation since? No. It has not held up. <laughs> it really has not held I up. I went back and I watched a lot of those old school Saturday morning cartoons, Pokemon, Digimon, Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, don't really hold as great. Well, Yu-Gi-Oh uh, Yu holds. Yu-Gi-Oh is actually yeah. still hilarious. Yu-Gi-Oh holds. Uh, there's a fight happening. There is a fight happening as we do get the red buff being hit up here. Does Aja look for a little bit more? He looks like he wants to maybe go for a leap strike, but yeah, Sheo getting punished a little bit for the fact that he did go for that cheeky invade, and that's just kind of the power of the Ivern. He's able to put down so much of those uh, passive uh, camp spawns, but he does lose a lot of HP because of it. Yeah, at the end of the day, still very happy, though, as he has his whole bot side to just grab up here. So mm -hmm. some nice pathing out of Sheo, the Ivern Master coming out ahead here off some nice early clears, and while it you know looked a little scary there with Aja jumping in, it did cost him his wave to kind of do that a little bit, so... Adam gets the shove and some pressure back in the top side and leaves nothing with Junjia to do. And that's the thing as well. I think with Junjia, uh, it does feel like when you have a moment like this where you do get them to kind of, you know, go for an invade, go for something slightly off, you know, kind of kilter, it does feel like it moves them away from what they would normally do. They go a little bit crazier and they don't quite, they're not quite sure exactly where they need to be at certain times. So, Sheo, if he can get around that chaos and kind of force it to be a positive for the side of BDS, that could be huge. Well, right now, yeah, it's resulting in a split map situation where Wako's feeling scared to walk forward and actually try and grab some of the CS here. Now, Lebrov has an angle. He does. Does get the hook there on top of the Alistair, who will take a fierce chunk of damage. The Ignite is taking one more auto, and Crowny gets first blood. Massive move there from BDS all around the pathing. Nice setup there by LeBron, landing that hook. I'm not sure if Woody was able to proc his aftershock there. I didn't see if he got a knock up there. I was trying to use his E to get it done, but either way, that results in him getting locked up. Easy free hits for Crowny. Flashes in to finish that one off. Well worth it, though. Absolutely well worth it, and this is the problem with the side of having an Ophelios. Ophelios needs time to kind of stack up. We can see Adam clearing out most of this wave. He's falling behind a little bit on the CS department, but forcing back Aja to get himself a little bit of a freeze in that top side. Yeah, as we've seen, Adam is not too perturbed about falling behind individually in CS. He's more than happy to take that if something else is happening on the other side of the map. And that's exactly what happened here. Woody does not Q, might have been on cooldown. Otherwise, you should be popping that right away for the Aftershock to keep you alive after taking the hook there. It allows them to burn him down, get that kill, and now Sheo and Lebrov making a move onto Aja. Aja, there's no, there's a little bit of a move onto him now. Gets hooked back. Will have the flash that he needed. He's getting stunned up, but do they have the damage afterwards? The ignite goes in. Flash over by Adam. He wants this kill. Needs it to spin to win. Let's Beyblade. Adam picks up the kill. Chops right through Aja with the rest of the team showing up there, unlocking themselves and moving around the map. Lebrov making his presence felt with Sheo. The two of them comboing together, and Jinji and Woody just too far behind the play, doing what best they can to hold the wave, but that was after Aja's TP, so it's going to be a long time before he's back up there collecting farming experience. Yeah, Adam will gladly tank up this turret, just so he knows that he can get this full stacked wave crashed in, and there's the crowd right behind BDS. Definitely one of the surprise hometown favorites yeah. in Korea. You see, <laughs> Who knew? You see tons of uh, fan signs for them. The crowd loves Adam's picks. Small but vocal fan base in the Korean community. And here you see it, comboing together. Just three people, no way out for him here. Just so much CC. And while he did have full health, so it took a while to burn through him, eventually Adam is able to flash follow and melt him down. And that comes off of a great rotation from Labrov, and I really want to hit home how impressed I've been with Labrov this entire playing stage. He has had a couple of, you know, a couple of small games or so where he's not looked incredible, but 
just in a general sense, it really does feel like he has leveled up fantastically to be a top tier support for his team. These plays are all coming off of him. And even in the last game on the Alistair, he was the one kind of dividing the rest of, the, uh, of PSG to make sure BDS could hit the targets. Yeah, I'm really excited to see the proactive play out of BDS after the slow game one and the shellacking that was game two. This feels like a completely different series. Game three, totally back and forth. This is the first early game where BDS really feels pretty heavily in control where they're all over the map. They're sweeping out tons of wards. There's almost no vision available for PSG. It's just that one pink ward on the south side of mid lane. And it's putting pressure on them. You can see this gold lead up to 1,000 now and some CS advantages slowly coming through. Adam is now crawled back ahead of Aja. Ball lane pretty even, mid lane pretty even. For PSG, obviously we are fully on the hype chain of BDS for the moment, but for PSG, this is a, a new look, if you will, that they need to try and figure out because they haven't got an answer for the Kai'Sa so far, and everything else seems to be falling back into place for BDS. For PSG, I need to see them look for something, because in Game 1, they played it slow and steady. They just win. At, they won out in terms of mechanics. Game 2, they smashed and didn't really have to answer for anything that BDS threw at them because there was nothing to answer for. So right now, they're looking at another game where they need to have an answer for what BDS are throwing at them. Yeah, I think PSG, we were talking about coming in, seemingly have downloaded BDS, having good pinches on the pool. But as soon as Crowning start taking away the Kai'Sa, the drafts have not quite been as impressive. The fact that you first pick the Maokai to take it away to combo with the Jace, fair enough, very strong composition, but it does not pinch Sheo at all. He's very happy to take the Ivern here. Oh, Hex Clash over the wall, gonna be brought in here. There's a pink ward there as well, Aja. Let's get the CC down, but I mean, it's it's a Garen. He's got plenty of tenacity, even with the Berserker Greaves. It should just be them forfeiting over this Rift Herald because the AD carry and mid lane of BDS are not here. This is a 3v5 at best for the side of BDS, but here we go. They're going to try and jump in. They get down the Maokai route and they will pick up that kill. Aja is ticking down with the Ignite, but will not go down. Now Lavrov has a flash available to him. Don't think he's going to need it just yet. Maybe they look to turn and burn on this fight. They still have Adam with a little bit of damage. A flash available. They jump in. They get the root down. He flashed away. The Miasma not down quick enough. Not quite able to get oh, the flash the forward. Petrifying gaze onto Junja. And he finally takes down Aja and Wako. Finally coming in. Nuke on the wrong side of this fight. And while that was all happening, it was always going to be a 5v4 because Crowny was mid. Yeah, Crowny had been forced back after eating a lot of shock blasts from Maple, so he was slow showing up in the play. And I think BDS hanging around, not the worst idea. Maybe you can stall it out, but they got a little too aggressive onto Aja. Might have been a one for one on the tail end of that, but then the fight just continued to progress from there. Two for one, I believe it is, at the end of it. Yes. We'll take a look here as, again, you can see Aja threatening the flank, doing the right thing. And I kind of like the idea of hopping on top of him with the rest of the team in LeBron, but Shea was just not on the same page. He's too focused on actually contesting the objective rather than just finding a cleanup kill on the other side of the fight. And that is what allows this chase down sequence to happen. And then it's a bit of a sunk cost fallacy where you could get out from here, but they want to go one more time with Nuke finally showing up. But it's still too many members from the rest of the team there and you can see he had no way out from that point. The flash from Maple onto the Miasma got a little screwed over there. I think he was going for LeBron to potentially set up a rest of a chase down knowing the team had nuke there, uh, but unfortunately ended up grounded after the flash. I will give Sheo a little bit of a pass because of, he actually had an upgraded smite. So he had actually oh, a yeah. couple of hundred more in terms of true damage compared to the Maokai. Junja was on 21 on his stacks. He was on 20, so he was able to get that up for him. But it does feel like it was one of those little small moments where it's like, cool, go for the objective or go for the kill. You're never really going to be able to come out with both. So sadly for BDS, they don't get the objective and they do not get out cleanly from that play. But they are still ahead. They are still kind of stacking themselves up. And with that first dragon picked up, they may look for another fight in a minute. Yeah, we also have Waka, who was the one who grabbed the Rift Herald uh, at the tail end of that chase down sequence, which is nice. But uh, Asha, that was a little scary. A little scary. Like it's that. still a little scary because Aja might have to flash away here. They're going to kind of collapse around him. He does have a Blast Cone. Flashback over by Adam, who's got himself an ultimate if he wants to try and use it. A flashback from Aja, just in kind. They're now punching right on top of this chase. And the Daisy just standing in front of him. You shall not hit anybody. And this is BDS trying to turn up the heat. Yeah, you can feel them just playing their champions better right now. The fact that you had Aja greeting out for the demolish proc with his E up, but Adam just sticks to him so, so aggressively. Burns that flash. And look for something on bot side here. Labrov TP pushing him in. Maybe a TP in the alcove. It's exactly that. And they're looking for a little bit more. The double knockup is good. Wacko has nowhere to go. He has been grounded. Go to your room, mister. You shall not be able to go play your video games anymore. Woody trying to run away. He will have the Maokai ultimate to just about 
try and get him out. Now a TB coming in. That's going to be Maple on the backside of this one with a hammer smash. A flash forward from Crowney. One more auto attack. And he goes down. Not quite able to get much more out of it, but a two for two at the end of it all. And this game is starting to devolve into scraps. Feeling a little bit like game three right now where everyone's fighting 24-7. They do end up killing Waco there. I'm not sure if he get a Rift Herald charge off or not. First off, we're going to just take a look at the Maple. Very annoying to play Jace when Daisy is out. It's just always body blocking your skill shots. And one of the things that they'll have to deal with over the course of the game, just so much chase down potential with the slows that she provides by throwing the shield on top of Daisy. There's no way out for Maple there. And yeah, it is on the Rift Herald charge that they go make this play. They grab the two plates. Able to stop the third one from going down. Let's see if they grab that later. But just so easy with Maple dead. There's no TP to match us in the initial part of the play. But fortunately, Junjia was in range to help turn this one around to stop it just being a free chase down onto Woody. Yeah, it just takes so long to kill off Woody here as well. Junjia comes in, the TP in from Maple as well. We might have to go back to live pretty soon, though. Yeah, looks like dragon. BDS are trying to stack that up very much the objective they've loved to stack the entirety of the year. They will get themselves a second one, and we will have a chem rift to set ourselves up in game number four. I feel like I've seen so many chem rifts. I don't know if I'm, I'm tripping or not, but... Like it's been, a, it's been a lot, yeah. I don't like I it. I thought we were going to get Cloud Rifts because we're in Korea. Yeah. But no, not Where's to Max be. At? Yeah. I mean, maybe when Atlas and Chronicle jump on, that's that's when that will actually happen, you know? Hopefully, because Chemtech is fun for the Blast Cones. I'll give it that. that. The environment is awesome. Like, the, the, the Blast Cones, the extra healing and stuff like that, it can make a lot of things. But the Dragon itself, not so much. I do like the uh, extra vision that they got there, the Pink Ward staying hidden in that brush giving them a uh, vision of PSG moving down the river here. Adam knowing that he is alone on the top side to pressure as heavily as he wants to. You can see how oh, this he's matchup going goes. for it. He's going for it. Bring down the hammer. Adam gets himself a solo kill, and this is the Adam that BDS fans wanted to see. He's popping off yet again, 2-0-1, and, and it's just going to get worse from here. Anytime that Ignite ultimate combo is available, he'll be looking for these kills, and it just gives so much room for the rest of BDS to play aggressive. There's no teleport that can follow up. That is the concern with the Ignite, is that on the flip side of the map, you might get TP'd on from behind. Not the case right now, and they're able to safely contest, looking for that red buff. The MasterCard lane economy snapshot. This is probably the first time this series all we've red, seen baby. all for BDS right now. Even if it's only a little bit in the jungle and the, in the mid lane, it does not matter because they are picking up advantages and the momentum that comes with that. PSG need to stem the bleeding. They need to calm themselves down and just realize that they're not able to take some of these fights because it is literally just them overextending a little too much. Yeah, if you look at how PSG's comp wants to play, it wants to be fairly slow and controlled with Maokai Saplings, Jace Poke, trying to buy space and make the enemy team walk into you. But if you're getting this really scrappy game like we're getting right now, it's very easy for Crowny and Nuke and all their high DPS champions to get on top of you and chase you down. PSG, they're, they're worried. They're scared right now because they don't really know how they can kind of take a fight right now. Like you said, they want to take a slow, controlled, make sure they're getting off the poke from this Aphelios and the and the Jace when he has got the Calibrum. So this is now just BDS brute forcing in towards that mid lane. They have a TP on Aja, but can he make an impact? That's the real question. Oh, Garen's already there. I think this is going to be a fake contest by PSG. Just hover around, make Adam commit so that you buy space for Aja. Keep him get, honest. Yeah, keep him honest. Get some turret, play, or turret excuse me, back into his pocket. Get some gold. Hopefully you get him up to level 11 to help contest against Adam. Because otherwise, you're going to have trouble in side lane all game long. Bro, it's not worth it. The hammer it's not worth it. Yeah. It's really not worth it. He need to back away. All right, we're going to have a fight. He really wanted that pink ward. Unfortunately for him, he's going to have to probably pay the price for it. Never mind. He's not gone down just yet. And he's got the shielding in from the, uh, the Ivern as well. The slowdown Junja finally finishes that one off. The Miasma comes in to keep Crowny in a safe position. Junja now running away. We'll have the Blast Cone courtesy of Wacko, but the TP from Aja ends up being a one-for-one one. mid laner for support. Still worth for BDS. Still relatively worth for BDS. Junji did finish off, or excuse me, Aja did finish off that turret before shoving that wave in, denying some CS to Adam, who had to stick around to make sure that play did not continue to go bad. But this is Adam doing Adam things, man. He doesn't care about lane assignments. What is that? Dive him. There's a kill on the top side. They're going to dive him. They know that Adam is there. Junja very much aware of it, but he didn't know how blood hungry Adam is. He can smell the victory. He can smell the reverse sweep, and he wants it. He's not done yet. Aja extended in the long lane. The Rylai's slow. Oh, they're looking for it right now. We'll get caught out here. 
Ooh. Adam Deacon. doesn't want to go for it just yet. Just recognizes he doesn't have exact information on where everyone else was from a PSG and probably rightfully just backs away. But the momentum, man, it is completely in BDS's favor after that slaughter of a game too. To bounce back from that is incredible. And I feel like a lot of this keyed off Adam's Garen, man. He's running around the map, blowing people up. And how many people really play against Garen at the top, top level know this champion's limits, its thresholds, where it's going to kill you from. You can just feel how difficult it is for PSG here. And LeBron, they're trying to punish him. They have the teleport advantage. They think Adam's making his way back down. So I understand why they go for this play. And initially, it looks like it was good for BDS to get that kill onto Maple early on. But you're worried about this chase down sequence lasting too long. But Adam shows back up. Everyone disengages. Except for Adam, who's still yeah. hovering around the top side <laughs> jungle. When's the last time he went bot lane? I don't know. Doesn't matter. Yeah. And Adam's just like, well, I thought, he said, someone's like, I thought we disengaged. He's like, no, I decide when we disengage and gets himself a kill from it. So, two and a half thousand gold leads, similar to when BDS were behind in game number one. Not inassailable for PSG, but now we're fighting around this dragon pit. Did they look for an engage? Did they look to try and maybe get a big hook? Oh, no, Labrov. Doesn't land onto anybody of interest, but does take a fierce chunk of damage onto his own self. Takes a bit of damage there, about half health, but still going to be relatively healthy, especially if there's any honey fruit that he can find in the river. A little hungry boy. Eat your veggies, kids. That's all that is. It gets you big and strong. But now, Dragon has been started. This would be sole point for BDS at 18 and a half minutes. It could be huge. The Rift Herald has to be dropped into the mid lane because it was about to run out of time. So are PSG. They need to look for a fight. Aja has been spotted on a ward. There is the ultimate from the Maokai trying to get something in. Smite comes in here for Sheo. So they have secured themselves the chem soul. Can they now corral on top of everybody? Maple's dead. The stride breaker is massive to try and slow them all down. They're running for their lives. They get the Adam over the wall. He doesn't need a flash anymore because he's got an Ivern on the 1v1 on the bot side. BDS! They're looking for everything. Oh, the Hawk almost lands onto Woody and Wacko. He's still on Aphelios. You have to be so careful of this now, PS or sorry, BDS. And they're still looking for a little bit more. They'll get so much gold right now. And everything's just going right. It went from all wrong to all right in the space of two games. Absolutely incredible turnaround by BDS, showing the mental fortitude that they had been criticized slightly for from that spring finals, that reverse sweep at the hand of Mad Lions, but it's looking like maybe their turn for it. Still plenty of game left to play before we see that happen here. Just really nice setup. Send Daisy forward to get in the way by space. LeBron also in front, getting Sheo that smite nice and easy, getting them their third dragon, I believe it is. Yep. Soul point, soul point. And Nuke was splitting away Aja this whole time to stop any sort of flank from happening. So the rest of the team has a very easy chase down sequence here. Over and over again, we talk about how sticky this composition is. You got to see it. Here's the flip side of the fight. Just what are you supposed to do? Yeah, you're just going to get run down, literally, because you've got the Rylite's Crystal Scepter. You're just constantly being pushed away. And Aja went from king of top lane in game number three to honestly nothing really happening from oh, right now. Not again. Bring down Divine! Judgment! Adam is owning this topside matchup! Adam is destroying them with gods this series now. The Garen popping off the win probability nearly 100%. And the zoom in there on that last There's little percent, a, it's a like 99. A yeah. <laughs> couple decimals. <laughs> I mean, technically, BDS could type FF and surrender. That's always a possibility. As long but as the game is running, it is not 100%. It's but not, but they're looking to try and catch out Labra. PSG know their backs against the walls, and they're getting desperate. Maple can't run away. And now, Junja will go down as well. They're chasing them all away. Wako cleanses but a bit too early. They're looking for the big Alistair, turning him into beef burgers. Finally, Aja TP's in with a three-man counter-strike. Woody just knocks away the AD carry of BDS to try and save his own one. He's going to be able to get him underneath the tower, though. Or it's going to be underneath the blue buff. And we go back into another scrappy fight. Adam is coming. <laughs> Look at the mini-map. They're just waiting. They're waiting for him to come in. They want him to finish this whole thing off. Woody finally going back in, trying to get the CC down. Crowdy gets the dust blade, which means He's invulnerable. Crowney looking for a little bit more. They don't need Adam. Double kill for Crowney. BDS in total control. They instantly move on to the Baron buff after destroying PSG. They are heading to a game five almost certainly now after winning that fight. Aja just had nothing he could do. He dies, teleports back in just to die again. Adam crushing this game.
You can see how desperate they are after getting killed there. They say, all right, let's just burger flip a play on the top side. They're going to go for it. Maple sees LeBron caught out of position, trying to find this chase down sequence, but the rest of the team is in range to blow him up, punish him for it. And for a moment, it looked like potentially Waco might have turned it around onto Crowny a little bit when they got a little bit too far ahead of themselves, especially with the teleport coming in on the right side of the fight. From this counter strike here. was incredible. This three-man pull into three-man counter strike was great. I think the punt away on Crowny maybe wasn't the right call, but then just look at how annoying Daisy is here onto Aja, who doesn't know what to do. He gets rooted. He's getting punched. He's getting slowed. He's getting knocked up. He says, "Fine, you know what? I'm just gonna hit Daisy." But then the shield comes in yet again on top of Daisy to stop this from going down. Knocked up again, and this whole time Crowny had finished off Waco and was now continuing to chase forward. And that timing on that dust blade proc was gross. I'm glad that Shea was playing the Dunkmaster Ivern skin because that Daisy was on man coverage right there. That was just man-to-man -man coverage at all times. Adam is strong, but, you know, still needs to pay a little bit of respect as he does have the blue buff. Excuse me, blue buff. The Baron buff. Looking to try and get a little bit more pressure, but, I mean, 9,000 gold, three dragons, 40 seconds till the Ken Dragon Soul. And the funny thing is, is that normally I'd be like, oh, it's not that great. But then I re recognize you have an Ivern, you have a Garen. Like, the Ivern just keeps you healthy. You have so many shields to actually utilize that Baron or that uh, Ken Soul so effectively. This is actually a very safe composition on the side of BDS, both because you have all the things that the Ivern can provide, but that Cassio is a very surviving champion. He just that mobility, and so if you get jumped on out of position, sure, you're going to die. But the Everfrost, you have the Rylage, you end up pretty tanky. You have tons of damage, plus all these shields that can come in. Kai'Sa can move around the map extremely easily. And yeah, I feel like this is a game five that we are heading to. You can see on those overhead picks there. Adam looking for a little bit of a move here. 1v2. Why not? He is not locked in here with you. You are locked in here with him. Adam now 1v3. We'll take it a 1v4. Waco's left to defend the base. Adam will eventually go down, but PSG, you're losing the game. Waka will have to defend 1v4 while well, these teleports come in. It will take some time. They're looking <laughs> for it. Powered recall. BDS want to send us to a game five, and they want it now. 24 minutes on the clock. You've got the Alistair in, and the Alistair's back dead. Sent to the Shadow Realm. Now, can BDS get these turrets down? That's the question. Maple looking for a little bit of a move, but they will get the ultimate down onto Waco, who will get back to the safety of his Nexus. Drop back in, though, Crowdy! Shotgunning BDS to a game five, but not quite just yet. Aja is back up. They've no TP onto Adam. They're looking for a little bit. Look at all these brushes. Look at all these little pockets of vision. They don't exactly know where everybody is, and there's no minions. No minions quite yet. They have cleared all the waves out of PSG, though, and it looks like finally they're going to back off here as multiple members start respawning. Low on resources. Undoubtedly have tons of gold to spend here, so BDS, I appreciate the aggressiveness trying to get out of this game and onto game five already. Crowny calling his shot there onto Waco once that Nautilus ultimate landed. That's one of those synergies for why you love walking in this combination. And it was one of the things that they were getting criticized for. Why aren't they playing Kaisa? Why aren't they playing Kaisa? Finally, they played it. Who wins in a row most likely here? You see, ah, don't go after Adam. Yeah, I mean, it took four members of PSG and poor Waco just sitting in his base going, guys, guys, I need help. Like, I, can't I, I know it's a little tilting to play against Garen, but surely he's not worth an inhibitor in all our Nexus turrets. Well, sadly, that's the, the trade PSG took. I mean, for PDS, what a turnaround within this series. Like, just incredible to see them now on the precipice of sending it to game five. And this is the funny thing. They're playing so well. They're doing everything they need to do but this isn't even the job done. This isn't the qualification match for them just yet. They need to do this and then one more time before they can really take a sigh of relief and then start prepping for Swiss. Yeah, <laughs> pretty quick turnaround for this team. And you can see, I mean, I can't even find a pixel on that one this time. No, I think, I'd love if there was a 99 .9999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999
playoffs right now. Shale moving in. Crowney stays alive. And so do BDS. We are going to game five. We are going to silver scrapes. The reverse sweep is still alive for BDS. What looked like a meme back at the end of game two is becoming a potential reality here. After a crushing game four, they have all the momentum in the series. And the question now is, what can PSG possibly do to recover this series from here? I mean, just the momentum alone, it's going to be hard enough. You can see there the coach kind of racket his brain, kind of head in his hands a little bit, just be kind of going, right, how do we change this? What do we do? The Maokai first pick didn't work out. The Kaisa was a massive pick now for Crowny. This isn't a toss-up a toss of you know, one power pick. There's several in this game. And the Jax kind of going into this is no longer going to work because the Garen is a perfect answer. Yeah, but last time he played it into the Rex, I believe it was, yeah. after seeing it here, thinking you could just play it blind to add it without banning the Garen was very, very <laughs> presumptuous, to say the least. Yeah, we, <laughs> we've seen it enough times now. Please do not do that anymore, teams, if you want to have any chance of beating BDS. Well, we got Silver Scrapes. We got it. We're not going to wait any longer. Headed to break. Play the music. in flash over by adam he wants this kill needs it to spin to win let's beyblade and they're looking for a little bit more the double knock up is good wacko has nowhere to go he has been grounded go to your room pressure as heavily as he wants to you can see how this uh, he's going goes. for it he's going for it bring down the hammer they are tp on the yeah yeah shift and start shift and start <laughs> Oh.